Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the medicine wheel. And one of the big questions we get asked at Wabano all the time is, number one, what is your model of care? Number two, how do you ensure that model of care is inclusive of the huge diversity of Aboriginal peoples across this country? Both are excellent questions and we're going to explore them today together. So the first thing that's going to happen is I would like to talk about the circle. How to be inclusive of all Aboriginal peoples is to start with the circle. It doesn't matter where you are on Mother Earth. Indigenous people around the world have always understood the power of the circle. So although the medicine wheel are First Nations teachings, and within that there are hundreds of different medicine wheel teachings, one commonality that we share across all cultures is this concept of the circle. Our elders are reminding us that the circle has no beginning and no end and to which we all belong. That there is no one that is any better or any worse within the circle. That there is no hierarchy. That we are all equal within the circle, but yet diverse, distinct, and different. When we sit in circle, we can only see each other's beauty. It's impossible to talk behind someone's back in the circle. You could only sit and look in each other's eyes and see each other's beauty. Uh, my favorite teaching is when our elders remind us that our, there's always room for one more in our circle. Our circle can always get larger. So that's where we begin in a concept of a medicine wheel. So whether you're Inuit, whether you're Métis, whether you're First Nations from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast, we share this concept of inclusivity within the circle. And that's where the medicine wheel begins. I'll draw your attention to the center of the wheel, which says culture. <laughs> At Wabano, what makes our model of care different here is that culture is not a piece of what we do. It is not a little program that we do. It is the very heart of everything that we do. It is the foundation for how we move forward, and it is the end on how we reflect. It is the middle piece that we question ourselves with all along the way. It is how we grow together. So culture is always in the middle. And I will just encourage you to remember that as we go through these teachings today. We have four quadrants within the medicine wheel. And our elders are always reminding us that these lines do not divide. So although I use the word quadrant because there doesn't seem to be a better way to explain it, these do not divide. They actually connect. So you're still keeping that concept of inclusivity. But we're going through this journey of the medicine wheel. And one commonality that Wabano has seen across um, Turtle Island is that we always generally start in the east. Why? Because that's where the sun rises. That's that beginning of a, of a new day, right? So we always start our journeys in the east the same way that the sun does. First concept, belonging. This is a big one. It's one of the key things that makes Wabano's work different than other places work. Why? Belonging is how you feel. It is, I've heard uh, a, a traditional teacher say once that it is about what you see and smell and hear and taste and touch. Why? Because when all those five senses are engaged, your heart is then engaged also. Another way to look at it is safety. You know, when we're children, we know that we cannot be who we need to be unless we feel free, right? So there's a difference between seeing children in uh, a very stern classroom situation to seeing children in a park, <laughs> right? Children in a park is, it's all set up for children, right? Every, all of their senses are engaged, and so their little personalities come out and they're able to express themselves and learn and grow and experience joy. That does not change as we become older. And so in our work at Wabano, we must focus on belonging. As elders, if we've experienced trauma, if we are going through a tough time, if we are in crises, if we are sick, if we are new to the city, we need to know that we belong first. So our work at Wabano, before we move into any other place, is to look at our surroundings and say, how do I create a place of belonging for my clients? That's different depending on your work. But we can take some commonalities. Do you ensure that uh, a smudge set is there? What does your office look like? Is it, is it clean? Is it welcoming? What does it smell like when you walk in? Is it medicines? Is there food that's cooking? What do you hear? 
Is it crying or is it children laughing? Is there music that you need to play? If you're doing children's group, do you just let all the stuff be there and kids have to figure out what they're doing that day? Or do you take the time and the thought to create a space for them that they each get their own individual place of crayons or whatever it may be, belonging? Take the time to think about that. That links you into mastery. As workers, we are forced here a lot, and I don't care what your job is, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a social worker, whether you're a nurse practitioner, uh, whether you're a finance officer. Our world lives here in mastery. Mastery is all about increased knowledge and increased, um, increased knowledge and change in behavior. So what does that mean? That means here is where you want to teach somebody about diabetes. This is the quadrant where you're teaching someone about how to plan financially for their family. This is the quadrant where you're doing community kitchens and teaching people how to cook for themselves and their families and on a budget. This is a quadrant where you are teaching people about fitness. You're changing behaviors, changing their knowledge, giving them a new source of knowledge so that they become masters of their own life. Our funders live here. We, this is where outcomes in our physical world start to happen. We want to know that we have uh, 1,000 brochures has been set out, that we have decreased uh, diabetes in the population by X percent. It is all focused on here. And what we have to remember at Wabano and what we do remember all the time is, you can do all the work you want to here. You can do the best brochure, you can do the best program, you can be the best nurse practitioner you want to be, but if you have not spent time in belonging, you will fail here. Our people will not come. Our people will not rise to the occasion that they need to. You must, this here is your job. Before here, investment must be made here. And then you can move into mastery. We're going along into the third quadrant. This is about the community. When you're here, this is about you. So we've moved from the environment, how I feel, right, to now me, what do I know and what do I need to learn? So as you're moving out of this, have I learned that? We're assuming that you have. Interdependence reminds you of your community. And our elders are reminding us that when we learn something new, it doesn't help anything if we keep it to ourselves. If I am the best hunter in my community and I only hunt for myself, that does not serve the greater good of my community. The word we use at Wabano is interdependence. Interdependence meaning what I do has impact on you, what you do has impact on me. We are interconnected. We are interdependent upon one another. It's that ripple effect. So if we take that model and, and, and take those teachings in, what that means is what we've invested through belonging, through teaching new skills and changing behaviors, means there's an investment happening here. This is where pride, not ego, pride comes in. This is when kids come home and say, Mommy, look at what I learned at school today. This is when youth are taught teaching other youth a drum song that they've learned. Right? A physical activity that they've learned. This is pride in who you are, self-confidence. Because you know that what you've learned and feel powerful about and empowered about can be passed on for the benefit of your community. And so here at Wabano, we know that this is our job is to, mm, push is the only word I'm coming to, I guess encourage people into this next quadrant. Uh, if you're a mental health worker, Doing one-on-one -on -one talk sessions is wonderful, that healing is important, but moving people into a group setting so that they understand their connection to the community. If you are a homeless outreach worker and doing one-on-one -on -one work, that the goal is to actually bring into a community setting because our elders have told us for generations that our communities are what make us strong. We're not strong alone. We're strong together as a community. So our role is to build that community and we do it through interdependence final quadrant that we're moving into in the north is generosity. Beautiful word for a mainstream word that is actually about long-term planning. Generosity. Our elders say that everything we invest today has impact not just to tomorrow but unto the next seven generations. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I've sat in many strategic planning sessions, and generally we're looking into five years down the road, maybe 10 if we're really pushing it. Our elders look forward to the next seven generations. So, if you know that what you do today has impact into the next seven generations, you give generously, don't you? You don't give a little bit. It's not just a little bit of myself here. Or maybe I might show up and do this little bit. Maybe I might do my job a little bit today. You are giving generously because that you know that this is not just impacting your children and not your children's children, but your children's children, 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 children. So this investment that people have made in themselves and into their communities goes into nations. So, volunteerism, <laughs> right? This is um, how you do your work day to day with this mindset of generosity in place. Um, I'm reminded of our ceremonies. When you go into ceremony, it is not about a little bit. Ceremony is always about abundance, right? We feast, <laughs> right? When you go into sweat, you don't have one rock, <laughs> right? You have multiple heated rocks. That is filling your senses, right? When we do a drum circle, it's not just one voice. It is multiple voices because this generosity, this abundance is about this carrying forward into the next seven generations. So model of care, again, I'll state here, it does not matter what your job is at Wabano. It does not matter what your job is outside of Wabano if you're looking at this and are not a Wabano employee. This model of care is based on our traditional teachings and knowing that culture is the most important, our communities are the most important, and that we always must be mindful as we begin our journeys to create a space that is safe, inclusive, and is respectful of all involved. Miigwech. <laughs>